how you prepare for a golf tournament? Ah, uh, well, I um, hit balls maybe 20 minutes, put a little bit, smoke four or five cigarettes, drink three Diet Cokes, and go to the first tee. Sundays, I won't even go to the right. It's a Thursday edition of the Daily Puck Drop. It's uh, Puck here with you. Thank you for uh, watching on YouTube, uh, listening on Apple, Spotify, wherever you find your podcast, the Daily Puck Drop. We do it every single day at 10 a.m. We give you 30 minutes of hard-hitting sports analysis from the Puck Sports Studios built uh, by Limback Lumber, Northwest premier supplier of specialized lumber and moldings since 1930. Okay, go get that new deck. Go get that new fence. Perfect time for all of it. You do it yourself, project or a small contractor. Uh, visit Limback Lumber for your lumber needs. 206 782 3487. Visit them online at limbacklumber.com. Puck Sports Studios built by Limback Lumber. Again, follow on the socials there as well on Twitter and on Instagram at Puck2040. And again, uh, with all of our, our, our clips that we do from our shows, uh, those are on TikTok at Puck underscore sports. And of course, on Facebook at Jason Puckett. All right, we got M's, we got a Seahawks brawl. And of course, we end every daily puck drop with uh, Hey, What the Puck? We'll revisit a bet uh, there with uh, Jim Moore. Let's get into the Mariners. Uh, 6 2. They let one slip away uh, yesterday. They're 59 and 56 on the season. Half game back of the Astros. The decision by Scott Service uh, with the bullpen didn't go with uh, Yimmy Garcia or Andres Munoz. Again, I understand the, the thinking for on his part. He wants to use those guys in a tied situation or a lead. But the problem is you're down 3-2 in a high leverage. It's a high leverage situation. And a high leverage situation calls for your two best pitchers out of your bullpen. Okay, you can't win the game if you can't be in striking distance of winning the game. It's pretty simple. And it's not that hard. And I think we've overcomplicated this here in the last but almost 24 hours of it. The, the, the decision of making decisions before the game has started is has, has, has been a little annoying to watch him manage games. At some point, you do have to manage with feel. And at some point, you have got to just put, you know, the 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 the, the spreadsheet away and say, who are my two best guys right now to keep this a one-run game? And, and that, uh, that answer obviously is Garcia and, and, or Munoz. It's not Jonathan Hernandez. It's not Austin Voth. It's not none of those guys. Not Trent Thornton. Trent Thornton has got an ERA of six now in his last 13 games. He's not good. Jonathan Hernandez, you just picked up off the, the, the scrap heap. You're throwing him in a, in a situation, in a game. These all mean something, these games. This is no longer the first month of the season. You're battling for, for a pennant right now with the Astros. Every game counts, and I know he knows that. I know they know that. You can't worry about getting the lead, hoping that you're going to get the lead so you can use those guys. You've got to get there. You've got to keep the game close in order to win the game. Uh, I, just, uh, I think just too many times he has preset the game, how he's going to do it before beforehand. And that's, I mean, having an idea of how, how you're going to manage a game and, and all that kind of stuff of beforehand is, is smart. I mean, it, it does make sense. I get it. Uh, but, you know, I, I just... <laughs> He, d he does it too often. He really does. He does it too often, and, and I think sometimes he doesn't just allow himself to, th to have a gut reaction to the game, how it's taking place, and he needs to get better at it. He just does. You know, I said yesterday was a wasted opportunity to use one of those guys. He doesn't have to use Munoz. He can use Garcia. And Garcia hasn't pitched since Sunday. I get the not wanting to do back-to-back, -back, and he had the, an arm issue that landed him on the IL earlier this season. But you, you've got to not use guys who you would never want to use in a situation like that. You're not going to use Jonathan Hernandez late in the season. Now, if you 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 keep it a one run game, you tie it in the bottom of the ninth, and then um, you know you you end up losing an extra innings because you've used those guys. Okay, I don't know. I, I think there there would be people that would would live with that. But uh, I don't know. That was a bad decision yesterday on, on his part. I think too much. It's um, it's going by a predetermined uh, book, and uh, he needs to he needs to move away from that. I mean, Hernandez had Rogers down one two in that game, had two strikes on, couldn't finish him off. He walks him, then he walks Perez on four straight pitches, gives up another single. Uh, Thornton comes in, and Thornton, as I mentioned before, his ERA of six in the last thirteen game, thirteen games has been bad. 
Uh, he gives up, you know, hits all over the place. Urshela gets a hit, makes it 6-2. Meadows gets a single. McKenzie gets a single. I mean, he gets Urshela out at home, but the game was over by them. Hell, the game was probably over uh, when uh, Kirby ended up throwing 28 pitches in the first inning and was worn out and already was down, you know, a run or two early on. He, he probably thought, well, the other guy on the other side of the field, Tarek Skubal, is he just going to mow us down? And he was as good as advertised with Skubal. Nine Ks, two earned runs, and in, in seven innings of work. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think once they got down early, it was probably over. And I think that once Kirby saw the offense not doing anything, especially against Scooble, uh, he knew his job was going to get that much more uh, difficult. I mean, you did have the the home run there by you know Cal Raleigh to pull within one uh, one run, and then you know in the eighth inning, uh, you know the Cal Raleigh the robbing. Uh, by Parker Meadows, who we've got the highlight of this one. This is one of the most, one of the best catches that you are ever going to see from someone at T-Mobile Park. Two. Look at this thing. High fly ball, deep center field. Meadows <laughs> is there. Good Lord. Parker Meadows thieves a home run from Raleigh. He planted, he jumped. Unbelievable. And he made himself into a. That is one of the most unbelievable catches that you are ever going to see there by, by Parker Meadows. Unbelievable to go up there. Six foot six, got the nickname that I think the giraffe goes up there and, and grabs it. Just unreal. But then you, you were that close from, you know, from taking the lead there on the, uh, the two run home run by, by Cal Raleigh. But. Couldn't get it done. Little things, you know, just got in the way of the Mariners yesterday. Little things. Mitch Hanniger misplay in right field on the Madras double, allowing Verling to score to make it 2 nothing early on in the game. A you know, little stuff like that is when you are on the, the, the rage, you know, razor's edge margins that the Mariners have played all season long, can't have that stuff. You, you can't make mistakes uh, like that. And uh, they, they certainly did. Uh, yesterday they'll get back at it today they'll finish up their three-game series with the Tigers before they welcome in the Mets into town Brian Wu five and one with a 2.08 ERA gets the start today uh, the run total uh, tonight seven and a half we uh, we almost had it yesterday the total was five and a half and when Meadows made that catch and you thought that's maybe how the game was going to end at three to two you're like okay well if you bet the under you're good and I know we're all degenerate gamblers here um but then, of course, they give up all the runs, as we have detailed there in the ninth inning, the, the three runs. So we blew it, the over, done. So we're 35-42-2 and two on the season on the Bet M's summer under. Other news coming out of that Mariners game uh, yesterday, you saw Julio Rodriguez taking some early BP work and, and trying to do some field work. Uh, ankle's still not 100%, well, not even close to 100%. And that now there's talk of you know, we desperately need his bat in the lineup. So we're going to rush him back probably earlier than than we than that we'd hope for and is going to be the dh and that's kind of the word coming out of out of um uh mariners pregame yesterday is that uh, they'll get him in there dh him they've got the options there in the outfield right now with robles playing center field so they can get away with it and luke Rayley can play out there and they can mix and match looks like dom can is going to be close to uh coming back here soon and probably happens today at least according to Ryan Divish, but again, ankle not good enough to play in center field, but could hit. He's clearly going to be in some pain, but you know, I think the hard thing for them is is doing this is making sure that he takes it easy on the base pass and doesn't um you know kill himself out there uh, because you try to tell these guys, hey man, don't, don't go hardcore, don't go nuts, you know, running around the bases. Uh, when you get a hit, but it's hard to sit there and tell Julio Rodriguez not to do that. He wants to do it. I mean, he wants to go hardcore and, and 100% all the time. So uh, we'll see how that develops, but they need him back. I mean, they need him back desperately. They need offense. They just continue when they lose and they struggle in these games uh, like they did, uh, you know, yesterday. It's, you know, the the offense clearly is, you know, the number one issue. Uh, for the man, it's just been the number one issue all year long. Uh, Ryan Bliss was uh, back yesterday. They brought him back. They option Cade Marlowe. Injury insurance for Jorge Polanco has been dealing, you know, this nagging uh, lower body injury, knee injury. 
So that's just something to monitor there with Jorge Polanco, who's been playing better baseball, been playing better baseball since this guy right here uh, deemed him done. Uh, but good for uh, Jorge Polanco and, and Ryan Bliss back up. We'd mentioned Dom Canzone could come back up here soon. And if they do do that, I mean, they've got a glut of outfielders. They've got a glut of DHs, all of that. Uh, what would they do? What's the corresponding move? I mean, I think it would be obvious it would be Jason Vossler. I don't think you need Vossler if you've got Canzone. You've got enough people that are playing first base and DHing with Turner and, and Rayleigh. And then the the options, you know, Garver's a DH backup catcher. You've Canzone can obviously play in right field. Hanniger can DH. So I, I would assume it would be uh, Vossler on his way out. But uh, uh, we shall see what they do, and we'll see if that move does happen today uh, with Dominic Canzone uh, coming back. Offensively, he's been pretty good down there in Tacoma. His bat looks uh, pretty good. Made a nice uh, defensive play down there uh, about uh, a few days ago. All right, the juicy thing that happened uh, yesterday as we transitioned to the Seahawks was this brawl at Seahawks training camp, the DK Metcalf brawl. Now, this video might be a little hard to see. It's from You're going to see it in the background. When the NFL Network was on site yesterday, I think it's Michael Robinson and I think Tom Pelissero uh, was there as well. I don't know why we can't get Garofolo out here. We're going to talk to Garofolo about it today. Uh, but uh, you're going to see it in the background where you uh, catch DK Metcalf ripping off the helmet, I believe, of Trey Brown and throwing it um, at another player there for the Seahawks. Las Vegas, to get some of that coastal breeze that Mike Look at that. Look at that thing. <laughs> Look at him. Bam. Bam. Man, DK Metcalf, man. He just, uh, you know, this is the thing with, with DK Metcalf. When you, you, you start doing things like this, this is his reputation uh, as, a, as a hothead on this football team. But he's swinging a helmet. Uh, that he ripped off from uh, Trey Brown. He swung it at Trey Brown, ended up hitting another player. I'm blanking on who the the, the safety was that he ended up uh, uh, hitting. The you know it's it's football and things like this happen, and he, it's a volatile sport. Emotions run high, um, but man, it's this is the type of stuff with DK that you just you can't have. Everybody knows they can push his buttons. Everybody knows they can push his buttons. And he allows it uh, to happen. And, you know, you've got Trey Brown and Jake Bobo, which really started it. And that whole, you know, exchange between those guys, Jake Bobo, you know, Bobo took exception to something that uh, Trey Brown did. He swung first at, at Brown. And then his helmet, as when he was doing that, his helmet came off. And then Brown swung and hit him in the, hit him in the face where he had to go be seen by a trainer and blood's being drawn. I mean, that that's, listen, physicality in training camp and at football practice is one thing. I mean, we're landing punches on guys' face. I mean, one, we're throwing punches, you know, with, you know, when, with, with your hands towards someone that's wearing a helmet. That's stupid. I mean, that's dumb. Uh, and then DK and Brown just getting into it. And I think the one thing that's problematic for DK is that I think people know, right, that they can get underneath his skin. They just do. They know that they can get underneath his skin. They know that they can bother him. Uh, they've uh, Coaches and other teams have talked about it, and that's the one thing that is going to be hard for, for DK. And not to sit there and just excuse what Brown was doing. I mean, Brown was probably getting under his skin, but Brown knows that he can get under his skin. And But for DK, because other people see this and other teams try to do this against him and have done it against him, and he's piled up penalty penalties left and right since his time in the NFL. And he's just got to be better. He has to be better. And, you know, one thing that Rob Staten and I have, have talked about, and again, I think I mentioned this before, Rob's not on, uh, on going to be on the show today. He's uh, vacationing uh, with his family in Vancouver. You know, but the one thing that, you know, Rob and I have talked about is how is Mike McDonald going to deal with DK Metcalf the first time, right? That he first time that he has the, an issue like this or tantrum in a game, a dust up with another player or something on the sideline. How is he going to react to that? 
Well, I think based on what we saw yesterday, I know DK, I think, apologized to, to the team and talked to the team afterwards. I think Mike McDonald loves all this. That was my big my big takeaway from, from yesterday and what happened on that practice field on Wednesday was that Mike McDonald loves this stuff, that he loved that these guys were fighting, that he loved the guys were ripping off helmets. And I know he, he brought them together and, you know, gave them the whole song and dance. Hey, we're all on the same team. Let's be careful out there. But I think deep down inside, Mike McDonald liked that. Uh, at least that's kind of the, the vibe I got. Um, you know, he ended up throwing a couple of guys out of practice. I think it was Hall and, and Christian Haynes that he ended up ejecting. But they had five different fights in that game or five different fights in that practice on Wednesday. You know, it's and it's the, oh, they're, they're tired of hitting each other. They're going to hit somebody new uh, coming up on, on Saturday against the Chargers. But I I think – with McDonald's background on the defensive side and his personality and and I think the toughness that he's coming over from, you know, his time with with the Ravens and then the and, and Michigan, you know, being under Harbaugh the Harbaugh's, I that level of toughness and aggress, uh, aggressiveness of walking that line. I I think what came out of that, no one no one got hurt. So I think he's okay. Uh, with it and you know it makes it more okay that no one did get hurt but I I think deep down I think he went back sat in his office had a beer with John Schneider and I think he smiled and he think he smiled and I think he's going to go back and watch that and tape a practice and like what he's seen because I think it's the aggressiveness and the shit talking that you see from Trey Brown and these other guys on this team and Devin Witherspoon and all of it and he likes it and he's a defensive guy and it was the defense that set the tone uh, yesterday there uh, in practice. But there, there is that line that you walk with it, though, right? There is that line where you you can cross it. I mean, you definitely can cross that line where you don't want people getting hurt. I mean, did Brown cross the line swinging at Jake Bobo and hitting him in the face? Perhaps, but you could also say, I mean, Bobo started it. Bobo took a swing at him first. You know, uh, DK and, and Brown going back and forth. Uh, DK, you know, walking away. You know, a couple of times, but Brown persisted. But that's the thing, man. Guys know. I mean, even DK showing maybe a little bit of restraint of walking away, but when a guy's still on you, still talking shit to you, do you react or or do you continue to walk away? I mean, most of us would say, well, you, you just got to be better than that. You just walk away. You do reach a point, though, where you're like, I mean, I've had enough. I'm going to put you in your place. Um. But that will be something to watch this year, I think, for DKs, is how the the maturity of DK, how how he carries himself when when situations like what we saw on Wednesday at practice arise again in a game, because it's going to happen. It's going to happen the first time he plays the 49ers. Kyle Shanahan knows what it's all about. He knows that's a game plan for not only the Niners, but for these other teams to get under his skin, whether to get him to commit a penalty perhaps get him thrown out, or just take him off his game. And I think at times, multiple times, it, it takes him out of his game, and he's got to be able to control that. And, you know, like as all of us, we all learn and, you know, and and, and get better at things that we struggle at. Um, I'm still learning, struggling at everything. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's that's his that's his one mark right now. And, and I wonder for them as an organization, you know, when his contract comes up next year, is this something that that causes them maybe to pause a little bit on whether or not they want to, to invest in him? I, I don't think so, but but maybe maybe it's something that is that is brought up at least on, on their part. All right. It's a short abbreviated version here of the uh, Daily Puck Drop uh, today. Uh, we got uh, – I'll be broadcasting the show tomorrow from a special – location so that's why it's got to be a little short and sweet uh today we do have mike garifold that's coming up we'll release him at uh, one o'clock today and again no rob staten uh but rob will be back uh next week but tomorrow we'll, we will not be coming uh from the uh, the puck sport well the puck sports studios will be on the road right and it's always mobile but we won't have this fabulous backdrop uh but we will have a special place uh coming uh to you tomorrow on a friday's edition which will include of course visits with jim again um, we should have Chris Egan on. Uh, I got to work his time, his timing out here, uh, there in Paris. And then of course, Ryan Divish of the uh, Seattle times, but we're not going anywhere until we do. Hey, what the puck 
as we uh, wrap up every daily puck drop with hey what the puck sports non-sports stories uh it's all brought to you by restoration one of north seattle your restoration company lets you avoid the stress of water fire and mold damage with their property restoration services it's locally owned and operated finally nailed it contact trent and Derek. Uh, make them your first call when damages do affect your residential or commercial property. 206-817-8917 or visit them online at restoration1.com, the North Seattle franchise. Let's revisit our bet yesterday between myself and the great uh, go-to guy, Jim Moore. I believe 100% I'm on the right side of this, but then so does he. And some of you believe in Jim Moore. I don't know why you would. No, but do we want him starting game one of the playoffs? No, no but he, of course but he's, not. But he's going to, Puck. No, he's not. Why would yes, he? Yes, he is. Why? He is not going to start game one of the playoffs if they line it up the way they want to line up. You're crazy. Come on. Oh, yeah. If they line it now, because then this bet's going to be void because if it lines up where he can't, you know, Gilbert can't start because of where he's at in the rotation, oh, okay. that's void. But if they can line it up, Logan Gilbert starts game one of the playoffs. Zero doubt. You're so Zero wrong debate. about that. You're okay. wrong. How, how, You're 100 flat bucks. out wrong. 50 100 bucks. bucks. 50? 100 bucks. Okay, I'm going to win this one. You know why? No, you're not. Because you know how you, know how you won that bet on Geno? Because uh, you were thinking how Pete Carroll was thinking. Yeah. I'm thinking how Scott Service is thinking. Yeah, and he thinks Logan Gilbert. <laughs> So we ended up, the bet is $100. I, I kind of clipped it out there. The bet is $100. We went, to, I said 100 he said 50 but I think he relented and went to $100. So $100 of this. This is the bet. Again, just to recap, if it all lines up, so it's not based on, hey, they had to use Logan Gilbert, you know, late in the season so they couldn't pitch him game one. The bet is if all of it lines up, so they wrap it up before, and they can maneuver – the rotation around, and everybody is on their full rest. I believe on a full rest with all of them, especially their big three. Let's just take Kirby, Castillo, and, and Gilbert. That's who we're talking about. That they will start Logan Gilbert game one of the playoffs. They should start Logan Gilbert because he's been their best pitcher. I mean, my favorite's Kirby, but Gilbert's been their best pitcher. Jim is like, you're an idiot. You heard him say that. He said, he called me an idiot. Uh, that uh, they're going to go with uh, Luis Castillo. So 100 bucks. Most people have sided with the great uh, Jim Moore. I'm a little disappointed in that. And, and Anders, I'm talking to you. Uh, so we shall see. That is our bet. 100 bucks on that. I'm going with Gilbert. He's going with Castillo. Leave a comment below on YouTube. Who do you got? Game one of the playoffs. Are you going with Logan Gilbert or are you going with uh, Luis Castillo? Because we are degenerate gamblers here as we wrap up uh, Hey, What the Puck, another edition of the Daily Puck Drop. Uh, because we're degenerate gamblers and, and we'll bet on anything. Preseason football tonight, kiddos. We got two games. Preseason football. We got Patriots and Panthers tonight, 4 o'clock on the NFL Network. Drake May is going to play against his uh, hometown team. He's not going to start because Jacoby Brissett's the starter. Uh, but you are facing the Patriots, so it's a good time to get a look at Drake May. Patriots are six and a half point favorites against the uh, Panthers. Let's go, Dave Canales. Let's take the Panthers plus the points. That's a lot. Let's take the, let's take the Panthers and Canales plus six and a half. Four o'clock NFL Network. The other game: Giants and Lions. Giants favored by three and a half. Mm. Do we get Drew Lock? Yeah, we get Drew Lock tonight, right? We'll go Dan Campbell. Let's go Campbell plus the three and a half. So there we go. Lions plus three and a half. We're taking the dogs. And then Panthers plus six and a half. Yes, are we pathetic for betting on on um, on preseason football? Yeah. But we also have been betting daily on the Mariners hitting the under all season long. So, yeah, we are pathetic. Uh, before we go here on Hey, What the Puck in the uh, Daily Puck Drop, uh, once again, just want to remind people, we're going to have content up there, but I'm going to be going on vacation August 21st uh, through Labor Day. So we'll be out, but we will have our season previews all up on all the different platforms, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, PuckSports.com. We'll have uh, season previews with the Seahawks Roundtable, uh, which will be Curtis Crabtree and Tim Booth. 
we'll have a Cougars uh, roundtable preview, our Cougar chat, our Cougar fireside chat uh, with uh, Jim and also a Paul Sorensen, and then our uh, Puck the Huskies podcast preview uh, with uh, the great Jordan Reffitt and the talented Elise Woodward. All of that will be up there uh, while I'm gone on on vacation driving Goldie around uh, British Columbia and Glacier National Park. So just want to let you all know, I'm just going to keep teasing that so people know. I know we're a couple of weeks away from that happening, but plan accordingly and, and you know, cry a little that we won't be here with you uh, daily for about uh, 10 days or so. Again, that's uh, Hey What the Puck. We do it at the end of every daily puck drop, and it's brought to you by Restoration One of North Seattle, your restoration company that helps you avoid the stress of water, fire, and mold damage at your property. Give them a call, 206-817-8917. Tell Trent and Derek Puck sent you, okay? Visit them online at restorationone.com, the North Seattle franchise. Coming up later on the program, again, Mike Garofalo's episode, his show released at 1 o'clock today on all the platforms and then uh, no Rob Staten today, but he'll be back uh, next week. So we will talk to you a little bit later. As always, we promise to be better. No shirt, no shoes, no dice. No. Would anybody like to smoke some pot? Yeah. I was born to love you. I was born to lick your face. I was born to rub you. But you were born to rub me first. What do you need my address for? We'd like to send out a mailer. <laughs> Mother of mercy, I don't speak Japanese! <laughs>